We are a holistic, diverse ministry for the entire family, grounded in love in order to save the lost, disciple believers, build strong families, and be change agents for Christ in the community. We call ourselves life changers because when you connect with us, our core values of the welcome, the worship, the word, and the witness will change your life forever. Need a change? The new life experience is simply life changing. Well, welcome to E-Church. Man, I got a word for you. And if ever there's a time to get the word that God has given to me for you, it's right now. It's right now. Let me just start out in asking the question, where do you live? I've lived all over the world. I've been blessed to serve my country for 21 and a half years and, um, I've lived in Saudi Arabia. I've lived in the United Arab Emirates. I've lived in Korea. I've lived in Europe. Uh, I've lived uh, all over the world. Uh, I've lived in America. I've lived in many states in America. And I can recall every address. In fact, the congregation often talks about the fact that when I reflect on the address, I said, Bishop, you remember you all's address when you lived in Valdosta? You lived on 469 uh, Deborah Road. Uh, you remember 2411 B Snark Street on Rome, New York? You remember all of those addresses? Yes, yeah, still do. Still do. Why? Because where you live is so critical. Well, guess what? Where you live is even more important in a crisis like we're in right now. So, for each church today, I want to talk about, I live in Goshen. I live in Goshen. Let me tell you a little bit about it. Goshen is the area in which the Israelites lived during the plagues. Let's read the scripture. Let's get right into it. And I believe that at the end of me sharing with you, you would want to live in Goshen too. In Exodus 22 through 23, it says this, but on that day, I will deal differently with the land of Goshen, where my people live. No swarms of flies will be there so that you will know that I, the Lord, am in this land. I will make, 23, I will make a distinction, listen, a distinction between my people and your people. Let's get into this text. In our text, we find ourselves in the middle of the fourth plague. In the middle of the fourth plague, and there are 10 plagues, as you know, and, and here they are. There are the water turned into blood, the frogs, the lice, the boils, the beetles, the cattle disease, hail, locusts, darkness, and death of the firstborn. Each plague represented something the Egyptians worshiped. In the case of our text, the plague is flies, but not like flies that we know. These were gadflies, like flying cockroaches and Egyptian beetles. They were very destructive. They inflicted severe bites on animals and on people. They they ate up clothes and they ate up books and plants and anything in the way. Worship of these flies was commonplace in Egypt. So far, the flies to rise up and inflict this kind of damage was unthinkable, humiliating, and even sacrilegious for the Egyptians. Now come to think about it, if the mighty Nile River of what they worshiped as well was turned into blood, their drinking water was gone as well. Frogs leaping and multiplying out of control, lice that infiltrated every opening on a person's body, boils all over their skin, hail dropping from the sky and locusts devouring crops. I'd say situation was at a crisis point. Not only that, they had uh, sun that was having issues. They worshiped the sun and, and Jesus and, uh, and God blocking the sun was an issue as well. Now, all of this is going on. Would you not agree with me that this was a crisis? 
right now, America is in a crisis. Not in my lifetime, not in your lifetime, not in the lifetime of anybody that is living now have we ever experienced a pandemic, a crisis like we are dealing with right now. Nobody. What is happening right now? I want to suggest to you that the Corona virus has thrown America into panic because the things that America has put up in such a way, in a way that we almost worship it and it put it above God, is now being pulled back and it is causing us to be in a type of a panic and a crisis. Man, we, we, what do we do? We worship Wall Street. We love wealth. We love all of our freedom. We just think of it as so great. And now all of that is being pulled back. Notice this, even the federal government is a little bit inept right now. I won't even talk about the leadership that's going on. The fact of the matter is, as the children of Israel and Pharaoh and the Egyptians were dealing with a crisis, we are dealing with a crisis. So what do we turn? I believe there's nowhere else to turn to find out how we navigate the crisis is through the word of God. So that's what I want to share with you. I want to take how the children of Israel made it through the crisis that they were in, teach you how they made it and make application to how we're going to make it. Let's get right into this word. There are going to be five things I want to share with you. You can write them down. I live in Goshen because it makes a difference. I live in Goshen because it makes a distinction. The third thing, I live in Goshen because it defends me. The fourth thing is, I live in Goshen because I am determined. And then finally, I live in Goshen because God dwells there. Let's get right into this word. Here's the first thing. I live in Goshen because it makes a difference. Here's the word, verse 22. But on that day, I will deal with you differently. I will deal with you differently. The first thing that God told Israel is he could and would deal with them differently in Goshen. Now, the word difference, as it is used in the text, means God has made a decision to treat one group of people one way and another group of people another way. I know this may not mean much to you, but this is the same God of the New Testament that says he has no respect of person in the book of James. This is the same God that says he reigns on the just as well as the unjust. This is the same God that says uh, he is a God of equality. But the reason for the difference is also found in the definition of the word as it is used in the text. This word stems from the word Difficult, stubborn, unreasonable, arduous, and hard. In other words, because the Egyptians were difficult, because they were stubborn, unreasonable, arduous, and hard, God said, I'm going to deal with you all differently than the way I deal with the children of Israel. What does that mean to you and I? During difficult times, the last thing you want to do is be difficult with God. The last thing you want to do is be stubborn with God. The last thing you want to do is push back on God. In this time, you want to be obedient to God's word because you want God to deal with you differently. I'm not interested at all in disobeying God at any time. And especially, especially in a crisis time. Baby, I'm trying to, I'm trying, God, what do you want me to do? Lord Jesus, is it, do you want me to pray more? God, do, do I need to worship more? What do you need me to do right now, God? Because I'm trying to get through this moment. And that's what the children of Israel did. And that's what the Egyptians didn't do. 
They pushed back on God. Pharaoh's heart got hardened. You know the story. And as a result, what did God do? He dealt with them differently. Here's the second thing. I live in Goshen because it makes a distinction. I live in Goshen and you would want to live in Goshen because it makes a distinction. Look at verse 23. I will make a distinction between my people and your people. I'm going to make a distinction between my people and your people. God also told them he could make a distinction. The definition of distinction as it is used in the text means to make a distinction without regard to race, sex, or religion. In other words, it does not matter who I am or what I use to believe. The moment I start trusting in God, he's going to make a distinction. Let me run that by you one more time. It does not matter my race, my creed, my color. The moment I begin to believe in God, he makes a distinction. So the children of Israel says, we are believing in you, God. And the Egyptians said, not so much. And because they said, not so much, God made a distinction. I'm going to distinguish you because you believe in me. Right now, all kinds of news reports are out. I mean, social media, the uh, cable news, the regular news, your friends, everybody is talking about the pandemic that we're in. This is the moment that you want to know God, make a distinction with me. Why and how? I'm going to believe you. I'm going to believe you're going to get us through this. Distinguish. Going to make a difference, God. You're going to distinguish. Here's the third thing. I live in Goshen because it defends me. Let me read several scriptures to you. Exodus 9, 7, 26. Exodus 9, 7, 26. Pharaoh went. Pharaoh sent men to investigate. Listen at this. This is awesome. And found that not even one of the animals of the Israelites had died. Come on now. Yet his heart was undying because he could not believe that. He's 26. The only place it did not hail, guess where? Goshen where the Israelites live. Exodus 11, seven. Let's walk through some stuff here. Exodus 11, seven. But among the Israelites, not a dog will bark at any man or animal. Then you will know that the Lord makes a distinction between Egypt and Israel. Not even a dog barking. Now that's something. Exodus 12, 13. The blood will be a sign for you on the house where you are. And when I see the blood, oh, you know it, I'm going to pass over. I'm going to pass it over. No destructive plague will touch you when I come to Egypt. Here's Exodus 15, 26. We're getting there. He said, if you listen carefully to the voice of the Lord, your God, and do what is right in his eyes, if you pay attention to his commands and keep all of his decrees, Guess what? I will not bring on you any disease I brought on the Egyptians, for I am the Lord, your God, who heals you. God was defending the children of Israel. He was defending the children of Israel. Did not matter what was going on. God was defending them. In Goshen, God defended everything about the Israelites. That is not unusual for God. In the midst of Job's calamity, what did God tell Satan? You can do whatever you want to do, Satan. Don't touch his life, though. Better not touch his life. You cannot touch his life. So we're going through a crisis right now. And I believe without a shadow of a doubt, a lot of things are going to happen. It might get worse before it gets better. But we're going to make it through this. <laughs> you can believe that. It's not going to touch my life. Notice this. Here's a word for you. I want you to write it down. I want you to get it. Psalm 61 and three. For you have been my refuge, a strong tower against the foe. 
Here's Proverbs. Grab this. Proverbs 18.10. The name of the Lord, here it is, is a strong tower. The righteous run to it and are safe. Strong tower. Strong tower. Let me explain just quickly before we move to the next point. The tower or a keep is the sections on a moat in which the soldiers would stay to protect them or protect the city that was behind the fence or the moat. There's a moat, okay? And in each little area, there would be a section where you would stand guard. That was a keep or a strong tower. And in that area, you would know that there would be protection for you because you would have be at a high level and you see what is approaching. God is saying, this is what the Lord said. I'm going to read it again. Proverbs 18 and 10. The name of the Lord is a strong tower and the righteous run to it. Come on, let's call on his name right now. Let's call on his name right now and let's run to him in this time of crisis. He's going to make a distinction. He's going to defend. He's going to make a difference. I live in Goshen because I am determined. Let's read some more word. Genesis 45, 10 and 11 and Genesis 46, 34 and Genesis 47, 4. We're going to walk through them again. Here we go. Genesis 45 and 10. All right, here it is. It says, you shall live in the region of Goshen and be near me. You, your children and your grandchildren, your flocks and herds and all you have. I will provide for you there because five years of famine are still to come. Otherwise, you and your household and all who live or belong to you will become destitute. Here's the next verse. You should answer your servants have tended livestock from our boyhood on, just as our forefathers did. Then you will be allowed to settle in the region of Goshen. For all shepherds are detestable to the Egyptians. The children of Israel were detestable. They were nomadic. They were herdsmen, if you will. The Egyptians were not so much. Here's the fourth verse. They also said, we have come to live here a while because the famine is severe in Canaan and your servants, flocks, have no pasture. So now, please, here we are. Let your servants settle in Goshen. Now, I want you to grab something. I want you to grab something now. When we started out sharing this with you, I read to you Exodus 8. Bishop, so why now are you reading from Genesis 45, 46, and 47? What's going on? Let me help you. Let's exegete this moment. Let's pull this text together. Here it is. They, uh, the word of God is telling us that before the children of Israel ever got into the predicament with the Egyptians, God had already determined, there's the word, God had already determined that they would live in Goshen and the land of Goshen was going to be a place of protection. Good God Almighty. If that don't make you run around the room, I don't know what will. Before the crisis ever hit, God says, I got you. Good God Almighty. He says, I have you. Before, and not only that, your children, your grandchildren, your great-grandchildren, your animals, all of the things that you have. God is saying, I had the place for you in Goshen to protect you before you ever got there. What does that say? There's a big deal right now. Everybody's debating, arguing. Oh, did the administration know beforehand? Uh, didn't we know this was coming? And what should we do right now? And all of this that is happening right now. God says, says that I knew this before it would ever happen. Come on. What does the prophet say? He says, God says, I know the end from the beginning. I'm Alpha and Omega. I got this thing down. And before a pandemic, a coronavirus was ever going to break out. 
whether it was in the greatest generation, whether it is in the boomer generation, whether it's in the Gen X, the millennial, or whether it's in the GZ, the generation Z generation, guess what? God is saying, I already got you. All you got to do is live in Goshen. So let's pull back during this time of crisis and know that God has us. God has us. Rest in that. Rest in that. I feel like preaching rain right now. Rest in that. If you go to the book of Hebrews, it says that the reason that the children of Israel never made it out of the promised land because they fail to rest in his promise. Let's rest. Let's calm down. Let's know that he has made a distinction that he's made a difference, that he's determined, and that he has us. He has us. He determined this a long time ago. Here's the fifth and last thing. I live in Goshen because God dwells there. Ah, oh, God dwells there. Glory to God. God dwells in Goshen. Let me give you this verse 22, just this little piece, because I want you to grab this where my parents live. Now, that little piece there, uh, the, the context of that, if, if we were to exegete that, let's break this down, and, and then look at this word live or dwell. The word dwell uh, in the Hebrew has to do with the place in which someone is residing. It is interesting how the writer lets us in on how he keeps us in Goshen. Notice how the writer qualifies what God does. The King James Version says dwell. In other words, as long as a person dwells in Goshen, all is well. If they wandered outside of Goshen, then they will be affected by the plagues. The plagues would be taking place all around Goshen and their protection was to dwell in Goshen within the city limits. Hey, glory <laughs> within the city limits. They could even see the plagues, but the plagues would not affect them. How you like that? How you like that? Some of y'all Star Trek fans, you know what it is. You sit, you you sit, and you see the force field. You you see on it. You see all around, but it's not impacting you. They could even see the effects, but as long as they stayed in Goshen, it wouldn't affect them. Now, if you think that's the revelation, here is the revelation of the entire lesson. The definition of Goshen is to be drawn near, drawing near, hang in there. So Goshen is not just a place because if you take the maps of antiquity, if you would take the archive maps, if you would go back and look at the annals of time, you were here and you would see no Goshen on the maps, though we have it in scripture. So is scripture telling us something that did not exist? Not at all. Not at all. <laughs> because Goshen was not just a place of physical real estate. Goshen, Goshen is a place where you dwell with God. It's the place where you dwell with God. So I need you to get the fact that here we are. We are in Goshen. When you dwell where God is dwelling, you are in Goshen. So you don't have to worry about, should I go to work? Can I work for home? Can I telecommute? Uh, what am I going to do? You know, can we go to church? We can't go to church. We can't be with 10 people. We can't be with 50 people. We can't be with 250 people, 250 people. I can't go. Uh, man, I, what am I going to do? Can I, I can't go to Starbucks anymore. I can't go to uh, Panera Bread. What, what am I going to do? Wherever, Just know this, wherever you are, if you are with God, dwelling with God, obeying his word, you're a living in Goshen right there. He's protecting you. He's going to be with you the whole way through. So here's three things I want you to do. 
so that you can stay in Goshen. Then we're going to close out. One, have faith in God. Two, have common sense and maintain your boundaries, your distances, your hands washing and all of that. And three, know that where God is, where God dwells, is where Goshen is. And God dwells within you. For greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. And if God be for you, who can be against you? God bless you. Let's live in Goshen. Let's not leave. Let's maintain our citizenship during this crisis moment. God bless you. May the Lord be with you. May his face shine upon you and give you peace. I'll see you next week with more Eat Church.